Good morning, everybody. It's Martha. I am here today because we are going to make something similar to this envelope. I mean, uh, not envelope. It's a, looks like an envelope, but it's a paper bag clutch. And it has a couple of small journals inside. And I showed this on a video the other day when I was doing the ephemera for the little journals. And a few of you asked me to go ahead and show you how I did it. So first I will show you what this one consists of. Um, I did add a little fabric type um, snippet thingy here. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. Um, but I've been having fun doing these even though I'm struggling with my eyes right now. And then you flip it open and I really love the way the inside came out. I don't use lace on everything, but I just felt like this really deserved it. So this is the envelope journal that goes in the larger pocket here of the paper bag. And this is a little mini journal I made. And I used um, Medieval Mirage and Antique Papery Papers. And I couldn't tell you which one's which at this point. So here's the little mini journal that I made and I just um, I printed out the papers a little bit smaller and then just dressed them up a little bit with some sticker butterflies I made and lots of room for taking notes but you still have pretty pages to look at so I had fun making that uh, it just sort of fell together because I had these all printed out already I have some things printed out but I don't know that it's gonna come out the same as this one um, on the envelope journal I did put another little fabric snippet kind of thing like a fabric collage and that's how I have the lace um, attached to the envelope these are window envelopes and today I'm not planning on working with window envelopes but the concept will be the same and then you open this up and there is a pocket here I did not glue my pockets shut and just a quick uh, flip through, trying to make sure I'm in screen. I have the camera zoomed in a little bit today so that it's easier for you to see what I'm going to do. And I just really, I don't take on a lot of the projects that other people do. I absolutely love the way this pocket came out. And that's the little journaling card inside. Although I have to cover the back of that and I didn't realize it. <laughs> I will cover the back of that. <clears throat> and I did sew around them, as you can see. I, I sewed around the pockets, and I sewed around the journaling cards with black thread. Um, but I can put uh, tea-stained paper on there and cover that up really easily. This is a real nice tall journaling card. And then this folds out because this is the center. And I just used full sheets of paper that I had gessoed and collaged and stamped for those pages. Um, and I just left these so that you can just write on them. And made the pockets out of the same set of papers. Oh, I didn't put lotion on my hands, so I'm uh, a little dry. I'm running late this morning, so I'm hoping I don't have any interruptions, but I wouldn't count on it because there's always stuff going on in my life with my husband, my daughter, my son. <laughs> it's just never ending, and they're all adults. <laughs> That's the sad part. And again, this is just a window envelope, but I just I just glued the paper with the picture on it inside. So you can still use this pocket. I wouldn't put big things in here, but you could put little coupons or, you know, little journaling cards or notes, whatever you wanted in it, really. But I really, I love the way this came out. And so I just had so much fun with it. And when I showed you all on the video, a few people asked if I would show how I did it. And 
if you go to the last video I did where I show these and I'm making the ephemera for the journal that fits in there, um, I have linked the video that Gina Wiseman from The Firefly Studio 67. That is her YouTube channel. I linked the video that she shows how to do this. This is not my idea. I am just doing what Gina showed how she did it. And today we're going to make one smaller than this, which is why I'm not using the window envelopes. Normally the window envelopes are the taller envelopes. Like this one is um, about nine inches long. And I don't want it that tall, so I'm going to make smaller ones. Because if you were to just keep this at home, that'd be all fine and dandy. But this thing is huge. And it's lovely because you could put even more things in it. But I want to make one a little smaller and see how that comes out. And because I don't have any of the junk mail envelopes with windows in them... We're not going to use windows today because, you know, we can do what we want. The other thing is that Gina um, glued this part of the paper bag shut. I did not want to do that. I wanted to keep that for little stuff in there. And I ended up making this little pocket journal to go right in that pocket but you could take the little journal out and put coupons like I said before coupons or a notepad or whatever you wanted in there and then I just closed it with an eyelet and some fabric and I just like the way the bow looks up near the closure so I will show you what we are going to do today. Um, I have <laughs> stuff. I, I'm really crowded because I did bring my sewing machine over. I don't know if I will use it on camera, but I brought it over just in case. So I have a bunch of papers, um, leftovers. I stamped a, na a brown napkin yesterday. I got this napkin from Panera, which is a restaurant here in the U.S., um, that I frequent. <laughs> so I have that. And then I do have two window envelopes. I have some tissue paper. I have some more of my pages I just sewed and collaged on. I have napkin. I have blank papers. And I have um, many other things. What is this? Okay, I have no idea what that note is. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you all my stuff that I have in a box over here. So I have, let me show you. What you start with are lunch bags. Now, Gina used this giant lunch bag, which is larger than a regular lunch bag by quite a bit. And... So I asked my husband to go get this lunch bag and he came home with the exact correct thing. Let me move my mat because brown on brown doesn't work very well, does it? So this is the giant lunch bag. This is a regular size lunch bag. And as you can see, it's probably an inch and a half taller. And let me get this ruler out. So this, well, that ruler's not long enough. Look at that. Okay, so the giant lunch bag is 12, I have to close one eye and open one eye. It's a little over, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, my eyes are still all wonky. <laughs> it's a little over 12 and a quarter long and uh, just under six inches wide. That's a pretty big bag. The regular size lunch bag, and this one is in white, and this one is in brown, okay? But they're the same lunch bag. This one is, let's see, just over 10 and a half and five wide. So much bigger, 
are the giant lunch bags. If you do it like that, you can see the difference. I think you can catch all of that on camera. I might have to raise you up. I don't know. You might be too close. I hope this video turns out well. So that's the difference. And the giant lunch bag will get you this clutch. Very big. Love it, but it's very big. I wanted to go smaller. So we're not using this lunch bag. We are going to use a regular brown paper lunch bag or a white one. I found, for those of you in the U.S., I did find both of these in Walmart. And all you have to do is look where the plastic bags are and you'll find the lunch bags. So this is the brown paper bag. This is the white paper bag. Okay, stick that back where it belongs. All right, so this is where you start. Brown paper bag or white paper bag, whatever paper bag you want to use. Makes no difference. And the other thing we're going to use is I'm just using some tea dyed, uh, just regular tea dyed envelopes and no windows in these. Now these are your regular letter size envelopes. And <laughs> these are, oh gosh, just over six and a quarter, okay, by three and a half. You could use something a little larger than this, and I'll show you how you how you measure what envelopes you have compared to what bag you have. So whatever bag you decide to pick up, um, whatever bags you might have on hand, they do need to have a flat bottom. They do need to have a flat bottom. And I'm pretty sure I have some paper bags in my drawer, which I will not jump up and get right now, um, from Hobby Lobby that are flat on the bottom too. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go in and you're going to kind of like when you were little, did you ever make paper bag puppets when you were little? <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a paper bag puppet. This one I already worked into the shape you need to do it in. So I'll show you on this one. It's going to go a lot easier for me because I've already done this yesterday. And I was going to make this video yesterday, but uh, I had a little tummy problem. So I ended up not being able to record. So what you want to end up is this shape here. And what I did was you punch out the sides with your finger. You, you just sort of work it out. You work it out this way with your finger on this side. You're going to work them all out, right? And I worked it quite a bit to get it very flat. You don't have to have it perfect. Um... If it has a little fold in it like that, that's okay. It's not going to make much difference. So I'll show you on the white one. It does take a little maneuvering to get this done. So again, paper bag puppet, right? So you're going to push the sides out very gently with your fingers because you don't want to rip the bag. Push the sides out. And you're going to, that crease there, instead of folding in like that one, you want it to fold out. So you're going to fold it out gently. And then this is going to fold down where the crease already exists. And I stick my hand back up in here. And just gently use my finger to push these creases that are facing in. You want them to face out. These white bags, they're not made very well. Like this one has a separation right here, a little hole in it, but we can cover that up. It's okay. We're going to make it work anyways.
So I just gently maneuver the creases around and I finger press them, okay? So that's how we do it, all right? Hopefully all that got caught on camera. So now we have two very flat bags. Um, this doesn't matter that it's sticking up. However, I do check this side because when I used the very large bag, this whole side came up. And what I do is, let me move my tea. What I do is I do just squirt when it's working. I don't have the correct pin for this glue. So it does dry up just a little bit. I sort of, even though we're going to glue papers over the top of these, I don't want anything coming up later on. So I secure this and make sure it's, it's down nice and tight. Okay, you don't have to do this. I just, I don't know. I'm picky about it, so I'm going to put it down. And Gina's tutorial on this, this is not a tutorial. This is my way of doing it once she showed us what she did. You know what? I'm going to raise you up just a little bit because I feel like you are way too close. Okay. Out just a little bit that way. Okay. I'm sorry. I hope I did not make you sick. <laughs> You're just too close. Okay. Sip of tea. Thank you. Cheers. Okay. Now you want to select the papers you are going to use. Well, wait a minute. There's one step. <laughs> Flip the bag around. Okay, and you're going to fold this section of the bottom, of the flat part of the bottom, you're going to fold it up. So I'll show you again, this is, this is where the bottom was, the flat part. You're going to fold this up, and on some of them it's a little trickier than others um, because it's bulky right there from the bottom of the bag being put together. Okay, and I glue it. Gina did not glue it. She just simply sewed around there. I sew later on. So I, I, I did glue it. And this is your flap. So it helps reinforce the flap to have it glued. Um, you don't have to use art glitter glue. You can use whatever glue you have. For me, the art glitter glue sticks the best, and it is uh, it dries quickly, and it seems to do the best job for me. So you do want your edges down. But you're gonna, if you're going to sew around that, you do not need to sew. Um, there really isn't, I don't think, a part of this bag that you couldn't do. If you, I think you could do every part of this bag <laughs> if you don't have a sewing machine. Let me put it that way. Okay. All right. Now that we've got that, what we're going to do, let me put my pin in since it dries out so easy anyway. All right. So... The next step is, and I'll show you on this because this one I've already maneuvered into the shape I want. If you can see it, what I've done is I have several folds here, kind of like, you know, the edge of a file fold, the fold of a file folder. It has several places where I've folded it. And then up here, the same. There are several. Because when you make this, you want to have, this came to a point but what I'm shooting for this time is to not have it come to such a point, but to have a little bit of almost like a gusset in there um, for the width, for the width of the journal that you're putting in there. So what I did was I folded it. You start with the flap and you go with the natural crease. So there's a natural crease right here. So you're going to fold that down. Okay. And then what I do is I fold it down about a quarter of an inch 
more. So you can see I folded it here and then I folded it here. And that's just sort of to give it a little, a little, a little flat part there for depth. Okay. And then you're going to take the bottom and if you fold it up to that, that, um, if you have this folded down to your top fold, because the other fold is here about a quarter inch away, right? You do it to the top fold, and then you bring it down a little bit to add about a quarter of an inch to that fold. So there I have, I have those two folds there. I hope you can see that. I hope, I hope that's explanatory, self-explanatory. So I'm just giving myself a little depth there. Okay? So I have two folds up there. I have two folds down there. So it sort of, it sort of could almost be like a little box shape there. So now I know I have space to put, you know, a journal in there and a little, a little wiggle room for it to be, you know, deeper. Okay. And honestly, this could even come up even a little bit more if you wanted it to, if, if it had to, depending on what you're going to put in there. Now, one of the steps that I did not do ahead of time on this one but I want to do ahead of time on the new one is in this pocket. Let me take these out. So because I'm not gluing this pocket shut like Gina did, I want to reinforce it because if it's just paper bag, it's going to tear really easy, especially taking stuff in and out of it. So what I did on this one was I ended up after I had put it together, I ended up putting a piece of cardstock on the inside. So there it is. See, I have a piece of cardstock in there. So what I think I want to do, oh no, I just tore it, is I want, don't do that. <laughs> I want to reinforce the inside here. See, I'm going to have to sew that again. It was sewn right on the very edge and it tore apart. Look, sad face. Boo-hoo. But that's because I sewed it so close to the edge. I'm going to have to sew it in a little further here. It'll be fine. Um, this one kind of looks the same. It's sewn very close to the edge. So I'm going to sew those two in further. Anywho's, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do what I just did. So I'm going to reinforce this pocket before I try and put it together. Okay? So we'll just put this back over here. I'm going to have to sew that. I'm not putting those journals back inside. So that pocket is this opening here. All right. So basically what I want to do, even though I'm going to collage on the outside of this, you don't collage on the inside because this is the side that gets glued and sewn up right here. Okay. You're going to sew or glue these edges. And because you can't really reinforce the back after you do that. You want to do it before. And I think what I'm going to do is put something on the inside to reinforce it. So you could take a piece of paper and fold it and put it in there to reinforce it. So, um, I have some cardstock here. Or you can use, and I'm going to put my mat back down because um, I don't want to mess up my poster board that's on my desk. So I'm going to see if there's something else I'd rather use to reinforce it. Um, this is some scrapbook paper that's really pretty, but I hate to waste that on the inside. I'm terrible. I don't like to waste anything on the inside of something if you're not going to see it. Isn't that terrible? Okay. Um, this isn't really heavy enough. 
I have lots of papers from different artists here that I could use to make it more interesting. I don't know what I want to do. I didn't plan ahead for this. I'm cold. Um, all right. Well, I'm just going to do this. So, paper cutter. I have a paper cutter here somewhere. Oh. All right. So, I'm going to make this a little narrower than the paper bag. So, it fits inside. All right. I think that'll do. So, yep. That's just narrow enough. And then I need to measure. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. That was loud. Made my dog lift up his head. All right, so I'm going to make this about three inches deep. That's about how deep my fold is. My fold is a little over three inches. So I'm going to make this um, six inches long. And the reason I'm going to do that, I will show you in just a minute and we'll see if this works or not. Now this part is all an experiment for me. <laughs> so we'll see. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this oh, dry hands. I'm going to fold it in half. Now I'm working today with my glasses off, which means my close up vision is blurry in both eyes. But if I have my glasses on, my close up vision in my left eye, which has not been operated on yet is good, but then my eyes go all wonky. All right. So that could have been a little longer. I'm good with that. Am I? Am I good with that? Hmm. I think I'm good with that. So that's going to, um, when I glue this, let's see, what do I want to use? We will try the Fabri-Tac, which I should have pulled out a newer one, but it'll stay wet longer. Now you could just use a piece of paper, um, a nice thicker piece of paper that's printed on. I use 24 or 28 pound. I could have used this. I hate to use anything too pretty, but then it would be pretty to have pretty on the inside, wouldn't it? Oh, Martha. You can print more, Martha. I'm going to use this sheet here. I'm actually going to redo this. <laughs> So I need this to be just a little, just a little shorter. And then we're going to do it six inches. Actually, I'm going to do it longer. If it sticks out, I can cut it off, right? I'm going to do this about seven inches long. Excuse the uh, leaf blower you can hear outside. That's my next door neighbor. So we're going to do paper. All right. Redo, redo. Rewind, rewind. Hey, I'm allowed to change my mind, right? Yep, see, I like that a lot better. Only I folded it the wrong way. I don't want white on the inside. I want paper on the inside. Okay, Martha. You're okay, Martha. I get flustered when I have to show people what I'm doing. All right. I like that much better than just cardstock. So yeah, if you don't want to use cardstock and you want to use something pretty, use a piece of paper. Because it's pretty. All right, we're going to see if we can get any Fabri-Tac out of here because it's almost gone. Maybe. Oh, speed up. All right, you know what we're going to do? <laughs> Bear with me. I have to jump away from my desk for a moment. Uh-oh. That was not good. Okay. I am here. I am just getting a new bottle of Fabri-Tac. Okay. Now 
remember, oh my gosh, this will work for any size paper bag that will fit the envelopes that you're using. I hope there's a hole in the bottom, in the top of this bottle. Let's see. What will we get? Nope, must not be. <laughs> yeah, preparation is nine-tenths of the law. Is that what they say? No, 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 that's not what they say. That's possession is nine-tenths of the law, Martha. I would like to possess a paper clip. See how we go. Do, 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 do. It's a balancing act, people. It's a balancing act. The struggle is real, right? It's always real when it comes to doing things when you're showing somebody else how to do it. Okay. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I have to. I have to wear, this is a good, <laughs> maybe I'm an oddball. Well, there's no maybe about it. I am an oddball. I don't know about you, but I cannot wear good clothes when I'm crafting. I also cannot wear good clothes when I'm eating. <laughs> because, because inevitably, I will get something on me. Yesterday, I had a, we were at a Cracker Barrel. Oh, this is going to be tricky. And I had ordered a baked potato and a garden salad. And, oh, this is tricky. Oh, we're sticking. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's not going well, people. Okay. Okay. I got this. I got this. This might have been better with... Some other sort of glue, a wetter glue. I don't know. But I got it in. Now I need a wet one. So we were at Cracker Barrel, got the dart, the, you know, they have this, you can pick two things to have for lunch. And I got a baked potato. The server brought the baked potato, set it down, and I went to reach for something, stuck my arm, the sleeve of my shirt, right in the butter on the baked potato. Yep. Can't dress me up, can't take me anywhere. <laughs> and when I craft, it's worse. It's even worse. I am such a mess. Okay, let's see. All right, so that's in there really nice. So that makes a nice little pocket and it helps reinforce it, and I will punch that out when the glue dries. I'm happy with that. And then this is going to fold up. Yep. I am very happy that I reinforce the edges. Now, on the other one, um, I also put tape around the edges, which I really liked. Um, actually, it wasn't tape. I took paper like this, and I folded it in half, right? So we did this, folded it in half, and if you figure out a better way to do all this, hey, go for it. It's all good. We share a lot here, right? So I would take this and glue this on the edges. And all of this was just stuff that I experimented with as I went along. I can't even remember. I mean, I watched Gina's tutorial twice myself, <laughs> I think. There. And see, that helps support that edge. Now, the only thing is, I'm not going to do that yet, because I want to do that after I decorate the pages um, further. After, not pages, after I decorate the cover further. All right. So the clutch is going to be this way, or you could do it this way. Um, I tend to decorate things like this 
And then I realize it's probably going to be looked at more this way than this way. So I often wonder if I should be orienting my items like this as opposed to like this. So do it whatever way works for you and whatever way you want to do it. Um, so my other one really does go this way. I think I'm going to do this one maybe, maybe. <laughs> I'm liable to change my mind, just remember that. Um, now this is on really heavy paper. Let me see what else I've got. I use these papers. Let's, let's do a bit of Roxy Creations. Miss Rachel. Ooh, I like that. That's pretty. That's perfect right there. And on my other one, I didn't wrap it. Um, you know, I, I didn't... <laughs> I could have done... We'll use this one. I could have done this. Right? And wrapped it around like this. But then something would have been upside down. You know, if you, if you do it so that this is right side up, then that would have been upside down. Well, no, it wouldn't. That would be right side up, too. Anyway, but the back would be upside down. Then. Anywho's, I didn't do that. I left, um, like, this bottom edge here is still brown paper bag. That's what I'm trying to get at. Do whatever floats your boat. <laughs> do whatever works for you. So I really like these birds on this side and then this will come around and be there all right i'm going to do i am definitely going to do this first but i need to cut some of this off i think i'll take it let's see i'm going to I'm not very good at this like like the others are. No, it's not going to work for me. All right. Uh, my ruler doesn't work as well, so I'm just going <laughs> to I'm just going to fumble along here. Uh, bear with me, please. I'll take a little off the top, a little off the bottom. And hopefully that's enough. Let's see. Let's see if it's enough. Yep. And I want a little edge of the, the paper bag showing. So it's all good. All right. Oh, Martha. Do I want it going this way? So it opens that way. Yes. So I want this to be this way. Yes. All right. So we're gonna, we're gonna glue. Okay. okay, where are we at? 38 minutes. This is probably gonna be at least two videos, if not three. Oops. Um. So watch for, watch for the follow-up videos because there's no way I'm going to get this done, especially fumbling around like I am and, um, you know, sort of being half prepared and half not prepared. And believe it or not, I started preparing for this yesterday, like I said before, and um, because I had a bit of stomach trouble. It's, it's a chronic thing with me, so um, I never know when it's going to hit. And as prepared as I was yesterday, I just couldn't do it. So that's the way it goes with me sometimes. Timing isn't always good, but... Ooh, speaking of timing. I got the call for my next eye surgery. Let's see. Let me get this one. Because that way I can see which way I'm doing it. 
I got the call for my next eye surgery and thankfully, so, so thankful, we have to be there at 8.15 in the morning, which means I do not have all day to worry about. <laughs> I, my, my first one was not until um, I had to be there at noon. And then he was running late because, you know, it was noon. And I am, no, I glued that. I'm just going to fold this over. Pretty sure I can cover that up anyway. I'm going to cover that up anyhow. So yeah, my first, my first surgery, I had to be at the hospital at noon. I don't think I got in until 1.30 for the surgery. So I had lots of time to become anxious and worry and stuff. But the one on Monday, I have to be there at 8.15. And it takes, we have to leave about, yeah, we leave about 40, 45 minutes ahead of time. Just in case something happens. You know, when you live rural... I don't know if I'd call it country, but but it's pretty much country out here. Um, you never know if you're going to, you know, if there's going to be an accident, if there's going to be some sort of holdup because you are you get behind a tractor, a farming tractor. Um, you don't know if you're going to, um, you know, what kind of trouble you're going to run into. So... I um I like to leave plenty ahead of time. Where's my my new toy? So that's not on there absolutely 100% straight, but you know, that's okay. That's all right. Isn't that pretty? Oh, those birds fall right in the right place. Good job, Rachel. <laughs> Good job designing this paper. Look at that. That is so pretty. And look, if you fold the cover the right way, the bird is like looking at the flower and the butterfly. Ooh-wee! Good choice. Good choice to make. All righty. I'm happy. Very, very happy. There we go. All right. Isn't that pretty? Very, very pretty. Perfect. And this is an eight and a half sheet of paper, so it worked out perfectly. That glue is dry now. I don't know if my paper punch will work very well. Let me get up and get it. I'm right behind you. Let's see. Let's see if this will punch today. Yep. Yay. Success. Success is a good thing. Right? Okay. So there we go. All right, so this is going to fold over this way. The journal is going to go in here. You've got a little pocket there. I think I'm going to punch out this one too, to be honest. I think I want them to match. Can't see, can't see. Everything's blurry. Oop. <laughs> and there we go. Everything's always a surprise with me, right? All right, so, yes, <gasps> I'm so happy with that. So now, if this is glued and sewn up into the pocket here, all you really need to do is decorate this part here. So let's I'll shove that aside. And let's get a piece of paper to go with that. Let's see, what do I have that I want to put in there? Let's look at some more of Rachel's papers. Oh, it's not printed that smaller. I'm sorry, I mumble when I'm thinking. That's pretty. 
I like that. Rachel, nice job. Do I want that or do I want that? I like that. Or do I want this at the bottom? Hmm. I think I want this one at the top. All right. Well, we'll see if we make a mistake with this or not. I need that there. I want this to fit down inside some. Some a little bit bitty bit. All right. I am hankering to get one of those rulers that's only available. It's the metal ruler, but it's the Joy. I think it's called Joy something. And I'm hankering to get one of those. I hope they make them available to us here in the United States at some point. Because that's the kind of tear ruler I'd really like to have. <laughs> so, alrighty. I'm going to fold that up because I'm going to take that off there. I'm going to fold. Do I want to fold that over? No, not really. I should have waited to fold that other paper over. I really should have. Because it could have sealed the edge. But I, I put washi tape on my paper, um, on the edges of the other one. And I will probably do that same thing with this one, is use some washi on. Or some um, smaller papers like this one, like I showed you earlier. Okay, so. All right, just glue it, Martha. Just, just quit pussing. Glue it. And we'll figure it out. Figure it out after you glue it. Figure it out. Okay. Cut off the edges when we're done. All right? It's all doable. Stop overthinking it. Just because you're doing it on video doesn't mean you have to overthink it. Right? Right. I've got way more glue on edges than I need. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I want that edge glued down, and I want that edge glued down. Yep. So as far as my time for um, having to be at surgery, I am so excited that it's early. Very, very excited. And I appreciate very much all of the nice thoughts that everybody sent me um, after my last video, the comments on my last video. You guys are all the very best. Absolutely the best. Look how pretty that is. That is so pretty. I think I'm going to have to do some stuff here, though, because there's, like, stuff missing. So we will figure that out, right? Yes. We will figure that out. Okay. Cover the glue. Okay, I'm at almost 50 minutes. I really like the inside there. So I'm going to... I am going to glue this on the edges here. And then I'm going to probably turn this video off and download it. My iPad only has um, enough memory to do one one hour video. So I have to download it to my computer. Or is it upload it to my computer? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And um, then I will be back to do the other video this afternoon after this one is loaded up or down on my computer. And then I will...
post them when I get the series done, I think. Or maybe I'll post the first one, this one, this afternoon. And then tomorrow I can post the next one, which will have to do with um, the journals. Oops, that go inside. And then we will... carry on from there right right but it's fun I just it's a it's not a long project once you figure it out um, if you're not me and you don't overthink everything <laughs> as our Rachel says decisions are the worst and for me they really are especially if I'm doing them on camera um, you know it's one of those things but I'm hoping to get these videos done, and then I would truly like to um, see if between now and next Monday I can manage to get. Um, I want to see something here. If I, can. I don't know if I can do that or not, but we're going to try. Um, Next Monday, when I have my surgery, I will sort of be out of commission again for at least a few days because my right eye that I had the surgery on still isn't 100% healed, although I'm seeing a whole lot better than I was a week ago. And I go back to see the technician tomorrow, and he's going to tell the doctor, because the doctor doesn't come back from Honduras until Saturday, he's going to tell the doctor his recommendations as to whether I should... Um, get the next eye with the multifocal lens or whether I should be yeah, that's not going to work whether I should be getting a different lens in which is going to be kind of weird because I really I don't know that I want two different lenses in my eyes um, right now in my right eye I see a whole lot better distance then I do close up and these lenses because they're multifocal you're supposed to be able to see both close up and distance now see my bag tore a little bit there it's okay it's okay it's gonna be fine let's see if I can sort of patch it here but it's gonna be I'm gonna sew mine Again, I don't think you would have to sew it. I think you could glue it. Um, but in the next video, we are going to... Oh, I'm just making it worse. Oh, no. Help me. These are not the best paper bags, I'll tell you. Okay. Okay. I did patch that up on the edge just a teensy bit, but that's okay. It's all about collage and making it work. And I might have to reinforce this edge here, too. Yep. Do I have a longer piece like that? I do. Look at that. I bet you this one's perfect, too. Because that's the way the universe likes to work. And I appreciate it, universe. Um, yeah, in the next one, I will pull the sewing machine over and we will sew the edges and we will start on the little journals that go inside. Um, once I get the outside done, I may just collage the rest of this outside cover and finish the patchwork here. <laughs> um, off camera. And then I'll show you in the next video what I've done. How about that? You good with that? Alrighty, so I'm going to continue on with this, and I will say bye for now because we're at 54 minutes and 30 seconds right now. So I'll say goodbye for this one. Look for part two, and there may even have to be a part three. Yay! <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I love you. I hope you're enjoying this project. I hope yours is coming along faster than mine. Um, I will link Gina's video below of how she makes hers, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.